This is part 134 of SQL Server tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss sequence object in SQL Server. Sequence object is introduced in SQL Server 2012. It generates sequence of numeric values in an ascending or descending order. Here is the syntax for creating a sequence object. We use create sequence statement to create a sequence object. So create sequence and then we specify the schema name dot and the name for our sequence object. And then we use the as keyword and then we have to specify the data type for the sequence object. The data type can be any of the built-in integer type. It can be tiny int, small int, big int, decimal, etc. Or it can also be any of the user-defined integer type. The data type is optional, so if we don't specify a value explicitly, then by default the data type is going to be big int. Next we can specify start with. This option specifies the first value to be returned by the sequence object. Increment by. This specifies the value to increment or decrement by. The value will be decremented if a negative value is specified. If this is not clear at the moment, don't worry, we'll look at an example and that should make it clear. Min value specifies the minimum value for the sequence object. Max value specifies the maximum value for the sequence object. The cycle option specifies whether the sequence object should restart when the maximum value for the incrementing sequence object has reached or when the minimum value for the decrementing sequence object has reached. The default, if we don't specify a value explicitly, is no cycle. With the default option, the sequence object will throw an exception when a minimum or maximum value is exceeded. Again, if this is not clear, don't worry, we'll look at an example and that should make it clear. Finally, we can use the cache option to cache the sequence object values for performance. We'll look at an example of that as well. Now let's look at an example of creating an incrementing sequence. So to create a sequence object, we use create sequence statement and then we specify the schema. The schema here is DBO and the name of our sequence object is going to be sequence object as and we are specifying the data type as integer. We don't have to. If we don't specify explicitly then by default the data type for the sequence object is going to be big int. And then we are telling the sequence object should start with a value of 1 and increment it by a value of 1. I have this exact same code already typed so when we execute this, the sequence object should be created. The obvious next question is how to generate the next sequence value. To generate the next sequence value, use next value for clause. So select next value for this sequence object. So when we execute this, since we have told that the sequence object to start with a value of 1, it should start at 1. And every time we execute this, look at that, the value is incremented. Now let's say you know we have executed next value for and you don't know what the current value is. Now you want to know the current value. To know the current value of the sequence object, you can use this dynamic management view, sys.sequences. It has got a lot of information available. So select star from sys.sequences where name equals the name of the sequence object. So when we execute that, we're going to get a lot of information. Look at that. We have the name of the sequence object, when is the sequence object created, and what is the start value, what is the increment value. Notice start value is 1, increment by 1. What is the minimum and maximum value? Look at the minimum and maximum value. We have not specified minimum and maximum values explicitly, but we have specified the data type. The data type is integer, so it is taking by default the default values of that data type as the minimum and maximum values. And we also have information about whether the cycle option is enabled, whether caching is enabled or not, and what is the cache size. At the moment we haven't specified any cache size, so it's null. And look at this column right here, current underscore value. So the current value of the sequence object is 5. So using this column from this dynamic management view, we can find out what is the current sequence object value. So at the moment, the value is 5. So when we execute this, we should get a value of 6. There we go. Now, let's say for some reason we want to reset the sequence value. To reset the sequence value, we alter the sequence object. Alter sequence, the name of the sequence object, and we simply specify restart with 1. Okay. So let's alter the sequence object and now when we select next value it should start at a value of 1 and every time we execute that it should increment the value from that point on. 
Now let's look at an example of using the sequence value in an insert statement. For that what I'm going to do is create this employees table and look at the employees table it has got three columns ID name and gender so I want to use the sequence object value as the value for this ID column. So let's create this table first and look at the insert query right here insert into employees values and we'll have to supply values for these three columns. So first I'm supplying the value for the ID column from the sequence object so we're using next value for clause here. So at the moment if you look at the next value of the sequence object it is 6. So when we execute these two insert queries for the first row it should be 7 and for the second row the ID value should be 8. Let's execute these two queries and select the data from the employees table and notice we get 7 and 8 as expected. So you can use that sequence object value in an insert statement as well. Now let's look at an example of creating a decrementing sequence object. Now to create a decrementing sequence object all you have to do is specify a negative value for increment by. The rest of the statement stays the same. So look at the example right here create sequence um, schema name sequence object name as int start with 100 and increment by negative 1. So it's going to start at 100 and every time we call next value 4 on the sequence object it's going to reduce the value by negative 1. So let's look at that quickly in action. So first let's drop the existing sequence object and we are going to create this decrementing sequence object. So we said the value should start at 100. So when I call next value 4 for the first time notice the value is 100. Now every time we call it it should reduce by a value of 1. Now let's look at an example of specifying min and max values for the sequence object. So far we haven't specified min and max values. So since we didn't specify min and max values it is taking the default values of the type as the minimum and maximum values. Now let's drop the sequence object that we have and I'm going to create a sequence object. So it's going to start with a value of 100 and we are incrementing the value by 10 every time we call next value 4 and minimum value is 100 maximum value is 150. So let's go ahead and create this sequence object and now I'm going to call next value 4. So we told it to start with value of 100 and increment by 10. So first time it should return 100 and every time we call it it's going to increment the value. Now the interesting thing to keep in mind here is what happens when it reaches a value of you know 150 that is the maximum value so at the moment it's 140 150 and I'm executing it again look at that we get an error so when the maximum value is reached by default it's going to throw an error because remember for the cycle option the default value is no cycle so with the no cycle option it's going to throw an error when the maximum value is reached for the incrementing sequence object okay now if you want to restart at the minimum value then set the cycle option. So what I'm going to do is alter the sequence object and we are setting the cycle option. So if you don't set the cycle option when the maximum value is reached and when you call next value it throws an error. So if you want to restart at the minimum value then set the cycle option. So let's go ahead and alter the sequence object and now let's execute this. So it starts at 100 so every time I execute it increments by 10 so we reach the maximum value 150 and I call next value 4 again look at that it restarts at 100 okay no exception now to improve the performance we can use the cache um, option to cache the values of the sequence object and if you look at the sequence object right here so we are basically saying start with 1 increment by 1 and turn the cache option and we are setting the cache size to 10. So what is this going to do? It's going to cache the first 10 values. As we read the values you know they will be removed from the cache meaning they will be read from the memory instead from the disk. So obviously the performance is going to be much better. When we have exhausted all the values within the cache and when we request the 11th value at that point the next set of 10 values will be cached again. So 11, 12 until 20 will be read from the cache and when you request the 21st value it's going to cache again the next 10 values. So this way by caching we are going to get better performance.
Now, so far we have used SQL Server commands, you know, create sequence command to create the sequence object. We can also use the graphical user interface to create the sequence object. So, we've created the sequence object. Where are these sequence objects created? Now, if we create tables, you know, they will be created within the tables folder. At the moment, we have executed that create sequence statement within the context of sample DB database. So, within this database, those sequence objects should have been created somewhere. Tables will be present in the tables folder. And the sequence object will be present within the programmability folder. So, within programmability, we have sequences folder. So, within sequences folder, notice that we have our sequence object. Now, you can also use the SQL Server Management Studio graphical user interface to create a sequence object. Simply right click on the sequence folder and select new sequence. And within this window, you can see all the options that you can specify for the sequence object. So, your sequence name, let's call it test underscore sequence and what is the schema name the data type so notice it is defaulting to begin now you can also specify precision you can specify precision when you choose maybe a decimal data type so let's stick to the default begin and what is the start value let's say start value is 1 increment by 1 you can specify min value and maximum value again those are optional so let's say min value is 100 and let's start actually at 1 minimum value is 1 and maximum value is 1000 and we want to cycle the values we want to cache and cache is going the cache size is going to be 20 so when we create this it should create a test sequence object now if you want to see the definition of this simply right click on that script sequence as create to new query editor window and look at that create sequence schema name a sequence object name as the data type start with a value of 1 increment by 1 minimum value is 100 maximum value is 1000 cycle the uh, sequence object and cache 20 values in our next video we'll discuss the difference between the sequence object and identity in SQL Server thank you for listening and have a great day